a lot of people are looking at short diagonal spread setups. We'll talk about why we still prefer the long diagonal spread setup, but we'll explain why. Mm -hmm. um, compare and contrast some Greek exposures, comp compare and contrast the actual risk profile, your profit potential, which mm -hmm. is the big thing here, uh, your delta, how it changes over time and with price movement. So we'll dig into that and then we'll pop over to the YouTube side of things, answer some questions, look at some trade ideas there. So if you want to join us there, just head over to the Tasty Live YouTube channel. You'll see this video streaming live. Uh, you can click into that and throw in your trade ideas along the right hand side. Yep. Okay, short first long diagonal spreads. So when we're looking at diagonal spread setups to begin with, um, someone had emailed us about look and digging deeper into short diagonal spreads. But really, when you think about the setup, the setup is actually pretty similar. It's just the the idea is similar. The strikes are different, and that's that's it. But there's some implications that we'll walk through in a little bit more depth, but with diagonal spreads, whether we are with setting up a short diagonal spread or a long diagonal spread, we still wanna make sure that we are setting them up intelligently where our short option, that is our cost basis reducing factor in the trade, has high implied volatility exposure, has low time to expiration. That's your best case scenario for getting all that value out of that option quickly and reducing your cost basis again on your long option aggressively. Um, so when we're setting these things up, we want to make sure that we're looking at a long option with further time, uh, further days to expiration, more days to expiration than the short option. And generally speaking, you're also going to be exposed to a lower implied volatility number, especially when it comes to earnings setups. But uh, even when we're not looking at earnings setups, you will still have more time exposure than implied volatility exposure. The further out in time you go with that long option relative to the short term short option. Mm -hmm. um, so with earnings setups, we've been doing this pretty frequently, almost exclusively for me, uh, just because the market has given us these environments where we see low implied volatility in the back months if you're going to like March or April or whatever. And then you have the really heightened implied volatility in the weekly for the binary announcement. So you can do them for earnings where you have a weekly setup with a short and a longer duration long option. You can also do them with uh, non event cycles. So going to a 60 day long option, 30 day short option. Um, you, we just want to make sure that if we are doing that, we have a lot of space between the width of the spread and the debit paid, which we'll get into in a little bit. Um, but that's that's one of the main things here is just making sure we're not paying over the width of the spread uh, if you're in a longer term diagonal spread. And if we are in a shorter term diagonal spread where the weekly is in like an earnings announcement, we can pay up to the width of the spread because it's a, it's a different implication. We know we're gonna get all that premium in a couple of days with the short option. Um, when it comes to max loss differences, you do have slightly different max losses. So with a long diagonal spread setup, your max loss is the debit paid. And that is because you have an embedded debit spread, a debit vertical spread in there with two different expirations for the long and short. We'll talk about that a little bit further, but the short diagonal spread is where you actually have more risk than your debit paid. Uh, simply because you have an embedded credit spread in there. So you have to take into consideration the width of the spread that you're getting into plus whatever debit you are paying. Uh, so the debit paid will be lower for the short diagonal spread setup, but you have an embedded credit spread that can take on intrinsic value where you don't have uh, intrinsic value against you, where with a long diagonal spread, your max risk is the debit paid if it expires out of the money. That can also take on intrinsic value, but that's a good thing for you. So just keeping in mind the difference there, I think will be important for the setups. But when it comes to Delta, Vega, Theta, and Gamma, they're slightly different depending on the short and long setups. But uh, one thing that remains true is that you have a long Vega exposure with both of these because your long option is further out in time. Your Theta, can be flat or slightly positive depending on the setup. Uh, and then gamma, you're gonna have gamma working uh, in a positive way, but that could be for you or could be against you depending on the actual structural setup of the strategies. Yes, yes. 
And just for reference, because I, I don't think we mentioned it, the short diagonal being a shorter duration, closer at the money, short option with a longer duration, further out of the money, long option. You're mm -hmm. doing that basically for zero delta exposure. You're kind of, you're you're selling a closer at the money, let's say 40 delta short option, and then you're buying a 40 delta long option that's further out in time, but that's gonna be further out of the money because if you think about the, um, uh, uh, n the normal distribution, your 40 deltas will be further out of the money because you're further out in time. Indeed. Um, so speaking of short diagonal spreads, we can pop over to the next slide and talk a little bit further about that. So like Nick said here, we're setting these up. Um, if you're setting these up, it is basically a similar setup as a credit spread, an mm -hmm. out of the money credit spread, but your long option has a further expiration than the short. If you can visualize that, that is literally what we're talking about here. So, But we'll give you visuals as well. We will give you visuals <laughs> as well. Um, but really this little uh, tidbit in green here is what you should remember between, when you're looking at the differences or visualizing the differences between a short diagonal and a long diagonal. A short diagonal spread has an embedded credit spread. So again, it is, it's going to look like a short credit spread set up at the money or out of the money, but your long option has a further dated cycle than your short. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. It can be as simple as that. If you don't want it to be as simple as that, we'll go through these next bullet yeah. points here with uh, <laughs> how your delta can change, how your vega, theta, and uh, gamma exposures are. So a short diagonal spread, really is a very neutral delta, a very neutral trade, not only because your delta is literally going to be neutral if you're selling a 40 delta short option and you're buying a 40 delta long option that's going to be further out of the money because the longer the longer duration you have on that long option, the more your distribution is spread across the strikes. Yeah, it's really about the the time value because the the delta exposure is the same, but your proximity risk on those options is different. Your short mm -hmm. option is much closer to the money and much closer to expiring relative to your long option that's further out of the money and further out in time. So the delta of them at this very moment is the same, but there's gonna be a very, very um, significant swing in delta depending on what actually happens uh, going forward into that expiration. Indeed. Um, so your delta is flat because you have this same delta if you're doing this on a delta basis. Uh, you will still have long vega because you're further out in time, long option will have a greater Vega exposure than the short. That's especially true uh, if you're doing it for like an earnings announcement where yeah. your short option basically just goes to zero after the announcement or after a couple of days pass. Now you will have a lot of Vega exposure in your remaining long option. Um, but like Nick kind of inferred to earlier, you are really short volatility in the short term because you don't want the spread to move in the money. And you also don't want the spread really to move too far out of the money either because you're not yeah. collecting a credit for these setups, you're paying a debit. So yeah. you want it to stay really range bound. You're, you're basically, this trade is more about the product that you're trading staying neutral than moving in a direction. Yeah, and I, I think it's important to understand that, that the long vega, you you are long Vega with this trade, and mm -hmm. it's coming from the time value of that long option. Like the actual Vega number will be lesser for that long option, but you're going to have more value in that long option relative to your short option. So your long Vega or flat Vega with a our typical setup for a diagonal spread. But that that Vega moves, both those options move in the same way because they're in the same direction. Meaning, if you get a move in your direction, both those options are increasing in value. Here, your short option is a heavier piece in terms of the change in delta, the chain, and that comes via this gamma, which we haven't touched on yet. I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead. But it'll be, it'll increase your your vol exposure because your your short option is going to get closer at the money relative to your long option. Yep. Um, and really, I think when you're thinking about this trade. Uh, in an all-encompassing way, it's also important to think about buying power and rate of return. Yeah. So this trade is going to have a significantly lower return on capital if you're 
correct, especially if you're just closing it when the short option expires, because your buying power is going to be uh, greater than the debit paid because mm -hmm. you have a uh, a credit spread that's embedded here. So when we talk about a long diagonal on the next slide in just a little bit, you'll see that, uh, and especially when we visualize these things, you're actually paying a debit upfront, but then you also have to put up the buying power equivalent to the debit paid plus your spread width yeah. because you have an embedded credit spread. And I, I didn't know if you're going to touch on these, but I want to touch on the long theta and short gamma okay. part. So your long theta on this position, because you have that closer at the money short option, that option is going to go to zero quicker than your long option. It's the same thing with a typical or our standard diagonal spreads where the short option is further out of the money. That short option goes to zero quicker. You'll have a longer uh, sort of mulligan period with the short diagonal because you're selling a meteor option. Uh, but there's a caveat to that. And the caveat is the gamma exposure. And that's really why we love those diagonal spreads is because if you have a directional assumption, you want to get paid if you're right on that direction. Even if it's inside the, the, the expected move, you want to get paid on that position. And when you're doing a diagonal spread where you're long the back that's closer at the money and short the front that's closer at the money, you could potentially make money on both of those options if you are directionally correct in, in really any, any fashion because the short option decays long option holds value and increases because of that positive gamma. With the short diagonal spreads, the problem becomes if you do get realized volatility, and this is why we talk about or why we mentioned that it's really short volatility in the short term because you have that short option that's that can increase in delta quicker, your short gamma here, so that short option that has three days to go till expiration, if it goes in the money, you're now, you know, if you're doing a, a, a put, um, Diagonal, short diagonal, like we're going to show after this. If you're if you're short that option, you now have a hundred delta short put and a long delta that might be twenty or thirty or forty deltas mm -hmm. further out in time. So you kind of your your directional assumption kind of flips in the short term because of that uh, short gamma that you have and the faster moving option being that short option. Indeed. Um, and of course, with a short option, that's going to be closer to your uh, stock price than your long option. You do have expiration risk, assignment risk, because um, if the spread is in the money, your short option is going to have less extrinsic value than your long. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you could be assigned on your your long diagonal spread setup, too, but the implication is different because you would be at a profit in the long diagonal spread and you would likely be at a loss in the short. But mm -hmm. either way, um, if we flip onto the next slide here, we can show you a visual of a short diagonal spread and we can look at a few different things uh, on the platform itself. And the one thing I wanted everyone to focus on too is this purple line. This purple line is the delta uh, exposure and you can see like Nick said this is this is your typical setup this is in Microsoft for earnings so we're looking at placing the short option at the 230 strike expiring this Friday at a 20 Delta and then placing the long option in March at the 20 Delta equivalent so you can see here the Delta is basically zero we have 10 points of difference in where our strikes are at the 20 delta because the long option in March has a wider distribution. So that 20 delta is going to be further out of the money than your uh, short option here at 230. So either way, this is a spread where you have you're paying a dollar 72 debit for this trade. But you also have to put up another thousand dollars in buying power because you have a 10 point wide embedded credit spread here. Mm -hmm. So even though this is a neutral to bearish type of trade. As you can see here, based on the risk profile, the theoretical risk profile, I didn't bake in any volatility collapse here, but I did push this to Friday just to show you what you could expect if volatility stayed where it is at 30% and you got all that premium out of the short option. So you can see here, it is a neutral-ish to bearish-ish trade, but looking at the delta, like Nick said, if that short put goes in the money, now all of a sudden, uh, 
where you see that purple line below the strike plane, that is a negative delta, and above it is a positive delta. So you start off with a slightly negative delta, but that delta actually grows positive if you actually do get an in the money move. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of interesting in that sense, but this also explains why if you get a move to 220, you're gonna see gains on your long put, but you're gonna take on 10 points of intrinsic value on your short yeah. put too. So it, it doesn't, for us, we still would rather do a long diagonal spread setup here for bearish. And if we're more neutral, I would just go with a calendar. Yeah, a calendar you, or an yeah. iron condor or something like that. Yeah. I, I think the point here is, and we've talked about this with like, you know, double diagonals and double calendars. You're kind of playing for everything all at once. Exactly. And it's, it's hard to like put this into a bucket of what this, is this trade bullish? Is it bearish? Is it neutral? It, it, there's so many variables here. Like I look at this trade as a way to finance a, buying a cheap put. Right. So yeah. my idea here, if I'm putting this trade on, is that the stock stays kind of range bound. Maybe it goes down a little bit. That would be the best case scenario. But ultimately, I want that short put to expire out of the money. And then I want to own that long put further out in time, you know, 52 days for a dollar, two dollars, something like that. You're, mm -hmm. you're basically getting a discount on that long option. The, the biggest issue here for me is that. A lot of people will look at this and think this is a bearish trade, but if you get that big move to the downside, if you get that bearish move to the downside, you're actually losing money. And that's the, the biggest problem for me and why I would lean towards going with just a normal put diagonal spread where your long premium is because you don't have that risk. You know, if something crazy happens, if you get a Facebook type move or a DocuSign type move, you're still making money. You're you're capping how much you make, but you're still in the in the green. Here, if you get that sort of outside move, and that's why I say this is short volatility in the short term, mm -hmm. if you get that volatile move, you're actually losing money, and that that would not sit well for me. Yeah, and this is why you just won't see us doing these trades yeah. um, because of all these reasons, but also, I'll take it one step further, <clears throat> think about a volatility collapse after earnings. What, what options are affected the most? Uh, the out of the money options. And where is your premium here? Where's your long premium? It's mm -hmm. out of the money. It's further out of the money from a strike perspective than it is where you're, with your short. So this can especially be problematic if you get a non-move in Microsoft where you get the premium out of that 230 put, sure, but you're also gonna get a, a pretty big vaporization that 220 long put too, because your 220 long put's now 30 points out of the money, and if Microsoft doesn't move, like it's projected to move, you're, you're gonna see a big vol crush, most likely. And that's yeah. gonna affect those tail events, which is where this 220 strike is, at least right now. So uh, you're gonna, you would likely see uh, either a scratch, maybe lo a loss. And again, I didn't bake in a vol crush here with this setup. We could do it live yeah. and see see how much vol crush you can actually take on before you get losses at the money. But the answer is probably going to be very little yeah. relative to a calendar spread where if your long option was at the 230 along with your short option, you're not going to see as much of a decay or a crush because 230 is closer than 220. Yeah. So the, for all these reasons, uh, we are out on these types of strategies, but I think the biggest thing is your lack of return on capital here, putting up $1,100 in buying mm -hmm. power for a hundred bucks, 200 bucks, you have risk on both sides. It's just not um, yeah. something that we typically will sign up for. Yeah. If we go on to the next slide though, we'll talk about long diagonals. These are the strategies that we've been talking about forever, uh, at least the last year and a half, I would say. But mm -hmm. the long diagonal consists of a shorter duration, short option, further out of the money with an at the money or in the money, longer term, long option. Uh, and this is the setup we usually go for, where the setup has an embedded debit spread. You have a stronger delta, long vega, temporarily neutral theta, and long gamma. Uh, and this is one where if you're directionally right, your delta is gonna increase in your favor up to the short option. But if you're wrong, uh, your delta actually decreases as the stock moves further out of the money. So you lose less and less and less the more wrong you are, but your risk is still equivalent to your debit paid. Um, one big thing here is that neutral theta is temporary. So if you let the short option expire, you're gonna have negative theta because now you just have a naked long option. So if you're trying to maintain that neutral theta, if you are directionally wrong, that's when we roll the short option out a week or two weeks, turn it into a calendar spread, et cetera, et cetera. Um, 
long gamma here because your delta will grow as the spread moves in the money. That's especially mm -hmm. true as your short option gets closer and closer to expiration. Um, buying power equivalent to the debit paid, no added risk other than the upfront cost because you don't have an embedded credit spread here. Mm -hmm. You just have a debit spread that you actually want to go in the money. And if it doesn't, your max loss is your debit paid up front. And this is, uh, of course, a strategy where your risk comes into play if you're directionally wrong. Um, the ideal is just to get a little piece of the directional movement compared to the cost of owning stock or shorting stock. Plus, you get the strong Greek exposure that plays into your favor in terms of cost basis reduction, uh, especially for an earnings announcement like in Microsoft. So if we flip on to the next slide, we can show you a visual here. So this one, significantly uh, greater return on capital here. This is the same risk profile, and you can see the short option is in the same spot, except here, our long option's at 240. And you can you can see too, if you get a non-move and a vol crush, uh, that 240 put is still gonna hold on to a ton of value because you're right at the money. Whereas the 220 could get vaporized, and you can see here, uh, you could still see a sizable profitability on a non-move in Microsoft, even with a vol crush, we'll look at that in a second too, just because your strike is at the money instead of 30 points out of the money. Yeah, and you could see the Delta exposure too is a lot cleaner, exactly what you want. Mm -hmm. You want it stays to get, on the bottom. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, in the sense that like we're we're basically at a strong negative Delta, negative 25. If you get a move down, uh, it stays negative as mm -hmm. opposed to flipping positive pretty much immediately. Yeah, um, and that where it flips positive, of course, is. Once if you, you get in the money. Once you get in the money, and that's that's just a function of that short option would have a 100 delta yes. at expiration, and the long option would have a 50 delta or yeah. whatever. But you're still positive on the trade. You're, yes, you, you're you flipped to, non, to long delta, but you're still a profitable trade Correct. because you have that, lo that longer duration long option. Yeah, so only have risk on one side. You're, you're taking uh, advantage of implied volatility in the short option in terms of cost basis reduction aggressively, just like the other one. But the big difference here for us is only having risk on one side, having a significantly higher return on capital, having a lower max loss. Mm -hmm. And uh, on a non-move, this trade can still work out because your long options at the money instead of out of the money. Yep. So hopefully that helps. Beautiful. Um, it's a heavy one. It's a heavy one. Yeah. But it's gotta be done. Because it, it, this is a simple setup, exactly. so to speak. Yeah. I mean, all, obviously, everybody has their own idea of how simple options are or not simple. But this is, in my opinion, a simple setup. When you get into these, you know, short spreads that are, are flipped from what, like, everybody, you know, what the norm is, mm -hmm. you get into some funkiness, which, you know, can you trade those sort of strategies? Sure. But you have to kind of understand what, what you're doing to, to get into those. Yeah. 